Hello, this is Brian Hegney, Instructor of Communication here at High Point University. Today I want to just show an introductory 3D modeling tutorial on how to model a fairly simple character and maybe one that we could bring into a video game. I'm just going to show you the end goal of what this is, um, of what we're doing here. Uh, it's not a perfect model, but it's something I think people can can look at for how you might model something of your own. Um, this is based off of a character named Robert from a video game called The Inner World. There he is. And I thought this would be a nice simple uh, body type that we could all model um, to kind of practice our own. Okay, So this is 3D Studio Max and this is um, a fairly popular modeling program. Now we are not going to get into texturing, but we could also unwrap this and texture it here, create materials, and then bring it into Unreal Engine to um, to animate it and make it a playable character if we want to. But I just want to talk about maybe modeling something fairly simple like this. So I want to point out how we are going to go about doing it. So number one, this is 3D Studio Max. Right here is my viewport. One way to model is that's really helpful is to look at multiple viewports at the same time and that's because notice that all of these are actually related the reason why it's not looking like it's moving over here is because it's moving in and out toward the camera and this is uh, by default this is not in perspective this is orthographic if I were to actually change this to a perspective viewport, what will happen when I right click into this viewport and move it around is it does look like it's moving toward and away from the camera. Okay, So modeling in perspective is, is not really helpful because it's hard to, you actually can't um, really understand the size of your model as it relates to your reference images. So right now it looks like my model of Robert is larger than Robert, but that's merely because of perspective, right? So we normally want to turn off perspective in our viewports when we are modeling. So that's what orthographic is. It's with zero perspective. And that way, no matter how far away the model is, you can see it down here, from your reference image, it doesn't matter. Your orthographic viewport is always going to show you the exact relationship between your model size and the reference image size. So normally we have a front, a left, it's left right there. Um, and for this one, we probably want top. Okay. And we can use this. Um, gizmo here to kind of see that. Okay. But what you might notice is I don't have a reference image for the top, but that's okay. Now learning how to bring in oh sorry. And I don't think I can edit that out. Um, well, I can, but uh, it'll be easier if I don't. Sorry about that. So what I did first is I did bring in some of these reference images. Um, I'm going to give this to you as a template so that you can model this on your own. Um, what we're going to do is first we'll just talk about... Sorry, I'm going to go back. How, how we model, how we even start this. Um, let me just right click, right click, right click. It's not helpful. Uh, bring this up a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right. So the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you here how I personally model. You don't have to do it my way. Um, this over here is our command panel. And this tab is our modify tab. We're modifying cylinder 01, which I'm going to highlight and rename 
Robert 3D model. And under the modify, this is called our stack here. I have a whole bunch of modifiers here that modify really the original shape that I started with, which is a cylinder. So you can turn off every single one of these and see at what what I did for each stage in the game. Let me kind of zoom in just a little bit for each one. I know there's a hotkey that I could just tap ZZ. Okay. And for each one, you can see what I did. Okay, so this is... No, I'm not going to do that. So this is the base cylinder. And I'm going to tap my... I'm going to right-click here and toggle my F3, F4. Toggle your F3, F4. And what I want to show you is... Oops, there. F4 toggles on and off the wireframes of your objects. Why aren't you doing that? Oh, because it's selected. There we go. It's just slow. F3, F4, F3, F4. Or F4, 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 okay. And F3 toggles on and off between wireframe, which is really helpful sometimes. So the first thing that I have here, let me select it, is a cylinder. That's what the cylinder looks like. And I gave it specific lines right here. The next thing I did was I added an edit poly modifier so that I could delete the top and the bottom. Whoops, let me just get this here. Oh yeah, haha. -ha. Wireframe, edge faces, shading, okay. You can't see it here because um, it's straight up and down. Well, that's fine. So I deleted the top and the bottom. The next thing I did was gave it shape, right? I actually scaled and I scaled, rotated, and moved all of these horizontal loops here. There we go. Nope, there we go. And so you see that turned on, turned off, right? So I scaled and rotated each of these to match up with his profile and to match up with his portrait view. The next edit poly I added was... Um, that I did was I just add, I needed to add a few more edge loops here and there, and I'll show you how we do that later. The next one is I used a technique to kind of grow his bucket head, or his bucket hat. I wanted to keep that as the same, the same model. And the next one is I refined his bucket hat just a little bit with more edge loops. And the next edit poly on top of that is I played around with the with the hat. And what you'll notice is ah, I actually am kind of upset um, that I did this slightly wrong. I'm going to have to change this when I model it for you guys. Is we need to close off our object. Our object shouldn't have any holes in it. Um, and so the way that and they also have to have quads or four-sided polygons. So in order to do that with this with the way I had this set up is is um, drawing this slightly diagonal which is really bothering me so I wish I hadn't have done that. Now if I were to have split the line down the middle and gone here this could have been a quad but then that would have left me with a triangle and we're not really supposed to use triangles if we can avoid it um, in game modeling. All right. So the next step that I did was oh tweaking the legs okay so notice I turned that on and off there we go tweaking the legs and then the next step was extruding the legs let's kind of show that I zoomed in there I don't know why you don't All right so first I make the legs and then I extrude the legs and then the last step is this step called turbo smooth and turbo smooth is a way that when you're done making this nice kind of beautiful model, if you turn on Turbo Smooth, it smooths everything. Um, but there are specific things that it does, um, especially if I want to, this bucket edge to have a particular curvature. I need to add a like a tighter curvature around here. I needed to add. Let's see if I can do this. Come on. Not there, not there. Where are you? There it is. So if I didn't have these 
edges, the added more of these lines here, then when I turned on Turbo Smooth, I'll show you what happens. I'm going to turn on Turbo Smooth. This is what it looks like normally. I'm going to turn off my edges, okay? Without this, these lines, the curvature is going to be much more drastic and almost make it disappear. So this is with lines, without lines. With lines, without lines. And I'm going to show that here if I can. With lines, without lines. So if I turn off Turbo Smooth, what you'll see, with lines, without those lines, okay? And from there, so with those lines, with the feet, and now the final Turbo Smooth, and I'm going to show that without my edge loops. Turbo Smooth, okay. Turbo Smooth, or with Turbo Smooth, without Turbo Smooth. So you can see it basically adds geometry in a way that gives this figure more uh, curvature. Okay, and that's what we're going to do today, and I'll show you how we do that. So I hope you enjoyed this introductory video. Uh, have a good day.